Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how we can install Ansible on CentOS 8, how we can set up a basic inventory file and how we can run simple ad hoc commands. So let's get down to it. Uh, the very first thing that I'm going to do is install uh, Apple release. Since Ansible isn't included in the default CentOS 8 repository, so let's uh, get down to this, dnf-y install apple release. This shouldn't take long. My lab consists of two machines. Uh, the one that I'm currently um, interacting with is Ansible Controller. And this is the machine from which I will manage other machines on my lab network. So here, if I skip to the other machine, I have node 1, which basically will be used as a test machine for executing Ansible commands. So if we take a look at the release, we have CentOS Linux release, and the same is actually here. Let me clear this stuff here. And the second thing that we need to do is enable power tools repository since some packages in Apple repository might depend on it. So let's do it. DNF config manager set enabled and we specify power tools. There we go. The last step is just DNF dash Y install Ansible. This shouldn't take long depending on the connection of course. What I pre-configured is I've basically added node 1 to the etc host file on the controller. So if we take a look in a second, once it's finished at our etc host file, we will see that I've added an entry there. So I don't have to refer to node 1 by specifying IP address. I will be just able to use um, host names. So it's more descriptive and so we can better understand, understand what's going on. Let me clear this. And if we take a look here under etc hosts, we can see that I have this node, this IP address has been statically assigned. The same is assigned here, I mean, I have here as well a static IP, a static uh, IP address assigned. All right, now what we need to do is set up a custom configuration file or custom directory where we will put our configuration files, inventory, etc. So by default, Ansible stores its configuration file under etc Ansible. And we have here this Ansible CFG file, which is Ansible configuration file. What I will do is create a custom directory for our Ansible setup. So let me create this, mk, mkdir slash Ansible. We're gonna copy this Ansible file there. There we go. And we're gonna navigate there. Let me clear this and run ls. In addition to that, we'll create a directory for inventory. Inventory is a file or a place where we'll put our host that we'll be managing using our controller. So let's create this directory called inventory. We'll add another directory that might be useful later on in our videos. So scripts and files. We're going to go to inventory file. Here we're going to create a file called hosts. So we'll put here our hosts or our hosts because we, for the time being, we have only one with INI extension. And we'll specify here our machine. And let me add this to web servers group as well. So one host might be a member of multiple groups. 
Let's save this file and exit. And clear the screen. All right, now that we've set up our inventory, what we need to do is generate a keeper because we'll be using, we'll be managing our node one machine using Ansible and using SSH key authentication. We'll not use passwords because it's not convenient. We'll have to retype it each time we want to uh, run an Ansible command. Of course, we could provide our password somewhere in the file, but it's more secure to actually copy a public key to the, con to the managed host and manage this this way. All right, so let's run a command called SSH keygen. This will generate a public and private key. It will save it here under this path root that SSH will leave the defaults, will not provide the passwords, passwords since this is a lab environment. And there we go. Let me show you where this has been saved. If we go to root.ssh and we ls the content here, we can see that we have our public key. What we could do is just copy this key like this, copy and put it in the authorized files on the target host. But there is another way of doing this. Namely, if we go to home Ansible, uh, to Ansible, we can run a command called ssh copy id. This will copy this key and put it in the authorized files on the target host. So we specify the user because I have credentials to that user on node one system and we'll specify the host name. There we go. We need to provide our password for the root user on node one machine and the key has been copied. If we take a look on the second machine, node one, a new file has been created called authorized keys. If we cut this, we can see that the key that I showed you earlier on has been copied to that file. So theoretically, we are ready to run an Ansible command. Let me clear this. And to test connectivity with Ansible, uh, all you need to do is type Ansible, specify a host name or IP address, depending on what you put in the inventory file. You need to specify a module, dash M stands for module. So we are indicating that we're gonna specify a module name here, and this is called ping. Please note that this is not an ICNP echo request. This is Ansible's way of checking connectivity to node one. It uses SSH basically under the hood, under the hood simply speaking, but we're gonna go more in details in next videos. All right, so let's see if our setup is working correctly. Of course, we forgot about something. Let's make mistakes and learn from them. All right, so if we go, if we take a look at Ansible CFG file, actually, let me open this file with vi vim. And if we take a look here, we have a, an option called inventory. This is the path to the inventory file and we haven't changed this. So our Ansible command referred to this inventory file and of course the host name isn't included there. So we need to change this because we set up our, our custom inventory file. So let's put Ansible inventory and we specify our host INI file. And now we save it, exit, we clear the screen and Let's repeat the command. Now it should work. And there you go. We got success. We got punk. 
which means that our Ansible controller is able to manage node 1. To show you a simple ad hoc command that we can use, for example, on our managed node, we can do something like this. Ansible node 1, remember, we specify the hostname against which we want to run our commands and we specify the module name. We'll run a simple shell command on the target host, so we specify shell, com shell module and we specify as well dash a which stands for arguments and here we provide our command. So maybe we want to check how long that machine has been up. So there we go. We should get some results. And this command has been run on this machine with shell module. You don't need to. Actually, we could do it like this. Node one, that lab that com. We could omit dash m and shell because by default, if we specify only dash a, it will know that we want to use a shell module. So we could do it like this. It's a shortcut. And in IT, if there is a better way and faster way of doing something, let's do not complicate our life too much. All right, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video. If you have any questions, put them in the, in the comments and I will try to answer to the best of my knowledge. Thank you for watching and take care. Bye-bye.